September 10th, National TV Dinner Day. Love this one. This is a throwback one today. The only thing I wish is I could have found one of those original aluminum trays <laughs> to serve this in today. I tried looking because I'd love sometimes some presentation for the show, especially something fun like that. Uh, but I couldn't find one. I couldn't even find styrofoam plates with the compartments. I mean, I guess summer's over officially when you can't find a styrofoam plate. <laughs> All right, anyway, so going back to TV dinners, I remember the days when they came in aluminum trays with the aluminum foil over the top. That's when they were real TV dinners. Then they turned into this sheer plastic microwavable cardboard tray thing and plastic and ruined the whole effect. Uh, but anyway, my favorite of all the TV dinners, just me, personal preference, was Salisbury steak. Love, love, love Salisbury steak. And you got the mashed potatoes, and you got the corn, and you got the little brownie in the middle. Perfect. Well, we're going to do three of those. I'm not going to do the little brownie in the middle because I have so many other desserts from the show left over that we got to eat, like that coffee pie, mud pie that we made. We got really enjoying that. Uh, but anyway, we're going to make, from scratch, Salisbury steak. Figure why not? I found a recipe online that said, best ever Salisbury steak. Now, I haven't had a TV dinner in years, but I remember the taste of Salisbury steak. And the thing that was so funny about Salisbury steak is if it had brown sauce, it was Salisbury steak. If it had red sauce, it was meatloaf. Same dinner. <laughs> uh, and different sides. But anyway, back to the story. Uh, so this recipe says, best ever Salisbury steak. Now, I remember that flavor of the Salisbury steak dinners. So, we're going to see if this is exactly what they're claiming it to be. Alrighty, it's not a lot of ingredients. Pretty easy. One pan, bunch of stuff to mix together, and we got this. Alrighty, and we're also going to have our mashed potatoes and our corn, because you've got to have that with your TV dinner. Here's what you need for today. Let's get started. Okay, for our best ever Salisbury steak, we need one 10 and a half ounce can of French onion soup, one and a half pounds of ground beef, a half a cup of breadcrumbs, one egg, a quarter teaspoon of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper, one tablespoon of flour, a quarter cup of ketchup, three teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, a half a teaspoon of mustard powder, and a quarter cup of water. All right, let's get started. This is one of those ones with the steps again, as usual. Uh, take your ground beef, so we're going to mix a bunch of stuff into that, okay? So I'm just going to make a little well here, okay? We're going to add one egg. I'm just going to beat that up a little bit so it's a little easier to incorporate, okay? We got an egg. We got our salt, our pepper, our breadcrumbs, and we're taking a third of a cup of our condensed soup. Now, if you have uh, homemade French onion soup, probably be way better, uh, a lot more flavor to it, and you know, be more authentically original. But we don't. We're using the can, which is okay. Once in a while, not a big deal. It's not like the rest of our stuff is uh, is not you know what we're gonna make with. I don't even know. I'm babbling right now. <laughs> I'm babbling as I mix this meat together, okay? Okay, so you mix this all together. It already smells like Salisbury steak. <laughs> I remember that smell of the Salisbury steak with that oniony gravy, and I guess that's maybe the secret is the soup is what gives it that, okay? So we're just mixing this all together by hand. It's always better by hand when you're doing this kind of stuff, because that way you really squeeze it and incorporate all your breadcrumbs and flavors and everything together, okay, rather than doing it with a spoon. So you get your hands dirty. That's what you're supposed to do when you're making food. Alrighty, so our meat's all ready and mixed together. We'll be right back to start making some patties. So let's make some patties. Now the other thing that was always fun about Salisbury steak, or original, I don't know about fun, but original about Salisbury steak in a TV dinner was these weird oval shaped patties that you got. So I'm going to take this Easter egg cookie cutter and we're going to make some oval patties. We're going to try to make this look as real as we can as the original, okay? But I'm sure it's going to be a much better tasting uh, 
considering we're making, you know, we're making the whole thing from scratch with, we don't have all the preservatives and stuff, I'm sure, that they add into their meat and their, and their, uh, sauces and the flavorings, you know, they have to add a bunch of preservatives to give it some shelf life. Ours we're kind of just going to do from scratch. So I'm going to place that in the mold there. And let's see what we get here. Probably going to have this line across it. Yeah, but that's okay. There's our little Salisbury steak patty. All right, yeah, kind of cool. It's original, something different. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make a whole bunch of these on a plate and we'll be right back to fry them up. We got to get them in the pan. There's all our little mini, I guess I they, well, I don't know, I don't know how much they're going to shrink. They're probably going to look like minis by the time they're done cooking. There's all our Salisbury steaks. So I got a little bit of olive oil I brushed into this pan here, and we're just going to start cooking these, okay? Try to get them all into one pan if I can. I just brushed the olive oil just so that way they wouldn't stick to the bottom of the pan as they're cooking, which ground beef sometimes does. Now, I like to use the 80 lean mix of ground beef or the 80 lean so that way there's more fat in it. You can use the, the you know, thinner version if you want. Uh, that's entirely up to you, but I like the 80% because that way you get more fat in it and it just gives it more flavor. Anyway, I'm going to fry these up, and we'll be back when these are all done frying, because then we got to put together our gravy for this. i got to heat up my mashed potatoes and my corn, and we'll be ready for TV dinner day. <laughs> right? Be back. Just going to take these out of the pan for a minute, just so I can drain the fat off. But I want to continue using this pan, because this is where we're going to make our gravy right in this pan, okay? But we got to get all this grease out of here. Alrighty, be right back. Okay, so they're back in the pan. I'm just going to take them off the heat for a minute while I put this together. Take the rest of your onion soup and your flour and whisk those together, okay? Now, oops, splashing all over the place. Now to that, you're going to add your Worcestershire sauce, the water, just to thin that out a bit, your mustard, get all that in there, and your ketchup. Okay. Whisk all of that together. I'm telling you, it smells <laughs> like Salisbury steak. It really does. Okay, so. Take that mixture now, put your stuff back on here, and you're just going to pour this right over the top of your steaks. And obviously this is going to thicken up with the flour, but we want all those flavors to incorporate into our meat as well, as well as finish cooking them in case they're not all the way cooked through. Um, that's the thing with Salisbury steak in a TV dinner. You don't get medium rare, okay? You get, you get cooked through. <laughs> so we're gonna let this simmer for about 10, 15 minutes just to make sure all the flavors really incorporate. The sauce already looks thickened up, but we wanna make sure we cook everything and get it nice and hot. In the meantime, I'll get my corn ready, finish my mashed potatoes. We'll be back, plated, sitting down, ready to try this one today. See, is this really the best ever? Salisbury steak? I hate when they make claims and they're not true. We're going to find out. See you in a bit. Alrighty, there's our homemade TV dinner. <laughs> Salisbury steak. The classic. My favorite. Let's see how we did here. Let's see if this is the best ever. Let, I, I just want it to be that taste. I want that flavor of Salisbury steak. It smells really close to what I remember it being, but let's see. It's pretty close. It's not exact, but this oniony sauce is what brings it really close to that flavor that you get from a TV dinner, or that I remember, anyway. 
Now, granted, like I said, in those TV dinners, they probably put all kinds of flavorings and preservatives and stuff that give it that unique. And obviously the meat, when you're using fresh ground beef as opposed to the frozen TV dinners and who knows what's in that, there's probably, you know, beef and pork and like all kinds of mixed meats. Whereas ours is strictly beef, so that's going to give it a different flavor right there. But really, really good. I would definitely do this one again. This is a nice little party dinner. If you're having people over, you make these cute. Now, you didn't have to go through the trouble like I did of using a, a cookie cutter to make the shapes of the Salisbury steak. But I just thought it would be fun to try to replicate that strange oval shape that they used to have. Alrighty. Oh, I also took yesterday's Yesterday or the day before when we did the the uh, Wiener schnitzel, I think that was yesterday, um, I took our leftover roasted potatoes, I pureed them with a little heavy cream and a little butter and made mashed potatoes. Figure, why start from scratch and make a whole another batch of mashed potatoes when you can repurpose the ones you got. And they're really good too. All right. Let me finish my TV dinner. I'm going to go sit in front of the TV. I've been on a classic movie kick lately and got to keep it going. See you tomorrow, everybody.